Hey guys, this is Mike Keenan here. Today I'm going to be going over VLANs and trunks. So in our topology here, we have two switches, switch one here and switch two over here. And we have four hosts, PC1, PC2, PC3, and PC4. And we have two different environments. Um, this top one, we're going to say that this is the sales department. And down here in the yellow, we're going to say that this is the engineering department. Now, in this scenario, sales never needs to talk to engineering and engineering never needs to talk to sales. So what we can do is we can take this switch here, we can take both of these switches rather, and we can turn them into multiple switches with VLANs. Now what does VLAN stand for? Well, it stands for Virtual Local Area Network. So uh, what this is going to do is it's going to provide us a couple of different things. First of all, it's going to provide us security. VLANs will provide us security. And they will also provide us efficiency. Something to keep in mind is both of these, or this switch here, all of these ports right now are in the default VLAN. They're in VLAN 1, which comes standard with Cisco switches. So the, you can consider this switch uh, VLAN 1 and this switch as well, VLAN 1, for right now. Now, what we want to do for security purposes, first off, we want, to, we want to get rid of VLAN 1. We won't be able to get rid of it, but what we want to do is take all the ports that's in VLAN 1, and we want to take them out of VLAN 1, put them in different VLANs. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. And then we're going to take each one of these ports starting off here with gig zero and we're going to assign it to VLAN 2 and we're going to come down here to gig zero slash one and we're going to assign it to VLAN 3. Now you may be wondering about gig zero slash two and that's the port that we're going to reserve for the trunk port. So in essence VLANs really are going to give us two things. They're going to give us number one efficiency and number two they're going to give us security. The reason that they're going to give us security is because at layer two, sales won't be able to talk to engineering and engineering won't be able to talk to sales. And it gives us efficiency because both of these circled areas, the blue area and the, and the yellow area, will be their own broadcast domain. Right now, this switch is just one broadcast domain. If PC1 wanted to send a broadcast, he'd be able to do that right now. He'd be able to send it out of gig zero two and also out of gig zero one. But if we were to put these ports in their own VLANs, well then, for instance, if we were to take zero zero and put it into VLAN two and zero one put it into VLAN three, well the broadcast stops here and it only goes out of the ports that are in the same VLAN except for the one in which it came. So we're gonna start off with configuring switch one. We start off by going into global configuration mode and then into sub interface configuration mode. So gig zero slash zero, or I'm sorry. The first thing we're going to do is create our VLANs. So we're going to say VLAN two. That two is the number identifier for that VLAN. And we're going to give it the name of sales. We're also going to create VLAN three. We're going to name it. Eng, short for engineering. We're going to do the same thing over here on switch two. VLAN two, name sales. VLAN three, name Eng. So now what we need to do is go into our interface subconfiguration mode. So we're going to say interface gigabit ethernet zero slash zero. We're going to say switch port mode. And we're going to make it an access port as opposed to a trunk port or some other kind of port. We're going to say switch port access VLAN two. Now what that does is that places gigabit ethernet zero slash zero into VLAN two. So now we're going to go to our another interface here. 
zero slash one, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN three. We're gonna come over here to switch one, interface gig zero slash zero, switch port mode access, switch port access, VLAN two. We're gonna go into gig zero one, switch port mode access, port access VLAN 3. Now you may be wondering, we still have an interface here, so you may be wondering what's up with that interface. So on both of these switches we have gig 0 slash 2 here and here and right now if we were to look, let's look at that, If we were to say show VLAN brief, you can see here that by default, in the beginning, all ports were in the default VLAN, not just gig 02, but we have moved gig 00 into VLAN 2, and gig 01, we've moved it into VLAN 3. But you'll notice here, we still have this port, gig 02, which is in the default VLAN still. Now, if sales wanted to talk to PC2 over here, if he wanted to come over this link, he wouldn't be able to do that right now because this port here is in a different VLAN. He can't broadcast out at layer two to hit PC2. So what we need to do is we need to take this port here, this, this link, and we need to turn it into a trunk port. What trunk ports allow us to do is transmit multiple VLANs across the same wire. So now we're gonna go into subconfiguration mode for gig 02. We're gonna go interface 02, oops, switch port. So we're gonna start off our command by using the switch port encapsulation or trunk encapsulation dot one Q. Dot one Q is the standard for, for trunking encapsulation. We're gonna say switch port mode trunk as opposed to access. We're gonna do the same thing for switch two over here. Now before we do that, let's just prove that we can't ping across. So we're here, I was doing this earlier, that's why I had successful pings, but it's not gonna work now. And the reason for that, the destination is unreachable because over here on switch two, this is not configured as a trunk port. He's still in VLAN one. So let's go back here to switch two and we're gonna go into interface gigabit ethernet zero slash two. We're gonna go switch port trunk encapsulation dot one Q, switch port mode trunk. So now what we've done here, let me change the color. What we've done here is we've allowed multiple VLANs to be able to go across this wire. We've got the blue VLAN, VLAN two, and the yellow VLAN. VLAN 3. So now whenever PC3 goes to talk to PC4, what happens is he comes into the gig 0 slash 1 interface here. He's going to come into this interface and what the trunk port is going to do, what the switch is going to do, is it's going to add another field. It's going to tag the frame with the VLAN identifier. So that way when it comes over here and it gets to switch two on the trunk port, he'll be able to see that tag on that frame and he'll know exactly what to do with it. So then if it's an ARP broadcast, he'll broadcast it out of only the ports that belong to the same VLAN. So he'll strip the tag off and then he'll broadcast it out of all the ports that are in VLAN three. In this, in this case, we only have one port. And of course, it's not gonna broadcast it out the same port in which it came. And it's definitely not going to send it out of gig 00 because that's a different VLAN. That port is in a different VLAN. So now that we have that, let's look and see. Let's go to switch or to PC1. Let's try that ping again. And there we have it. We have positive communication from PC1 to PC2. 
Now let's go to here to PC3 and see if we can ping across on him as well. And we can. So now if we were to come over here to switch one, let's do a couple more, or at least one more show command. Show interface trunk. And you can see we have gig zero slash two. He's the mode that he's in is on. He's usually in encapsulation 802.1Q, which is the standard for trunking. And currently the VLANs allowed are all VLANs. Now what we can do is we can specify only the VLANs that we want to allow. But by default, if you don't specify the VLANs, all VLANs are allowed across the trunk. But the second that you put that, v that VLAN access command on the port, what's going to happen is it's going to do a implicit deny of all VLANs that you don't specifically specify. So you want to keep that in mind. So there you have it. That's a quick explanation of VLANs and trunks and how to configure them. I hope you liked this video. I hope you learned something. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.